Now, I, I, I alluded to this earlier, but you might be wondering how blood glucose fits into this picture. Inside the endothelial cells, when the endothelial cells take in glucose, that glucose will get converted into what's called nucleotide sugar donors. These are molecules like this is going to sound funny, UDP gluconac, and I'm saying that in a way that it's not totally spelled. If you wanted to lurk, look into this a little more, just type in udp dash G L C N A C as well as UDP glucuronic acid, um, that enzymes, enzymes will use those molecules to build the structure of the glycocalyx. So in that sense, glucose can provide some of the bricks, but again, it is when there's glucose in the endothelial cell, and then it diverts the glucose into that particular pathway, building those, the mole molecules that become the structure of the glycocalyx. But when glucose is high in the blood, so when it's really high in the plasma, the outside environment, outside the endothelial cell that is, sends a very different message. You have potential for more oxidative stress, and you absolutely have a greater formation of advanced glycation end products, which will bind the receptor for advanced glycation end products, or RAGE, R-A-G-E. And when RAGE signaling is up, it activates these enzymes that will break down the glycocalyx, like heparinases, hyaluronidases, metalloproteinases, and it will in turn also blunt the production of nitric oxide. So it's almost as if the brick factory that's running inside the endothelium, but there's a demolition crew that's on the outside, which is chipping away at the glycocalyx. So while the one molecule, the glucose, is providing the structure for the brick factory to make the bricks, the glucose that's outside the cell is acting like, as I said, this demolition crew, and it's damaging the brick wall that the brick factory is trying to build. Hopefully that metaphor is not getting lost or too complicated. But remember, in the endothelium, that means that it, as the glycocalyx starts to thin, the endothelium becomes more permeable. So it's much more likely that you might have the invasion of lipoproteins. You might have the invasion of white blood cells, thereby increasing the risk potentially of atherogenesis. Meanwhile, back to the um, advanced glycation end products, they're going to be activating um, immune and, and pro-inflammatory signals anywhere else throughout the body. But from a cell biology perspective, we need the glycocalyx to regulate or modulate the interactions between endothelial cells and the circulating immune cells, dampening the pro-inflammatory responses. So when we have metabolic conditions um, like obesity, some researchers hypothesize that an adapted endothelial glycocalyx in the adipose tissue, vasculature, not just the fat cells itself, but in the blood vessels of the fat cells, it actually um, may help prevent too much inflammation. So again, when the glycocalyx is working well, but of course, as the glycocalyx is degraded, that's going to exacerbate the consequences. All right, now let's move from blood vessel to gut, because when you think about the glycocalyx playing the role of filter or keeping some things out, allowing some things in, of course, the, glyco the, the intestine becomes very relevant here. In the intestinal epithelium or the lining, the glycocalyx will coat the microvilli of the enterocytes. Now, the microvilli are, if you're watching, or I'll try to explain this too, it's like these little, these finger like little projections. So, if you were to zoom in at a microscopic level of the cells that line the gut, you would see these little columns of, of structure popping up and down, weaving up and down, like the fingers on a hand. And that is to enhance the surface area of the gut epithelium to then enhance the absorption of molecules, just to make sure that we're getting everything in that we want. But we have, it needs to be a little porous. We need to allow some things through. Of course, a large, a large part of that is there's the mucus layer, but then of course we have the glycocalyx. And, and the structure will selectively permit nutrient absorption, ideally, while excluding pathogens and toxins. So that's going to help maintain the gut's primary role of only allowing in what we want in. There is some fascinating dietary relevance here. Uh, for example, certain human milk oligosaccharides 
such as the fucosolactose molecules. There are a couple of them that are relevant here. So milk has these fucosolactose molecules that have been shown at least in vitro or in cell cultures to enhance the signals of a key part of the glycocalyx, the heparin sulfate part, and the hyaluronic acid. This helps stabilize the epithelial glycocalyx, which can support barrier uh, maturation in early life. So this is one of the reasons why the breastfed baby may have an advantage in, in just overall health because mother's milk is providing some of these molecules to enhance the formation of a robust glycocalyx. There are also some hormone signals that are in, introduced during weaning that can upregulate some and help mature some of the molecules of the glycocalyx, further supporting healthy um, epithelial function and, and thus healthy immunity too.